All right, today's talk, we're going to talk about how to secure the manufacturing floor for IT people. Because when we talked about in the last video was OT and IT are different. OT networking concepts are use Ethernet, but use Ethernet in lots of different ways. If you haven't seen that video, it would be a good prelude to what I'm going to talk about here. My name is John Rinaldi. I'm president of Real-Time Automation. I've been in the industrial automation industry now for 30 some years and I talk a lot about networking on the factory floor. So uh, as I said, today's we're going to talk about how to secure the manufacturing network if you're an IT guy. So a couple of things couple of things I think we should start with is one is the first thing we have to understand is we have to look at this and set it up as uh, for perimeter security. I've talked a lot about perimeter security over the years because you know, I, I was looking at you know, these old castles from the third century. And what happened, in the, what did they do? When they built a castle, they put a moat around it and they had a drawbridge and they had one entrance in and out of the castle because they could watch it very intensely and make sure that the enemy didn't come through that door. Same thing here. When we're looking at a, a manufacturing system, we want to use perimeter security and make sure that everything that's coming in and out of that manufacturing network is me our messages that we want. The advantage we have is that all this traffic is fixed, as I talked about in the last video. Everything we know, every message that should be on this network every day, every minute of every day. There's no surprises. This isn't like IT, where somebody's got a new application, there's a new database, there's a new laptop, there's a new printer, there's all sorts of new stuff going on at minute by minute. Here, nothing should change until we, we have a, we rev something. So we've got that advantage. And now, so we're gonna use perimeter security and the fact that we have fixed traffic. So there's some requirements though we have to, we have to put in place before we can actually secure this. So what are those requirements? One is, the first requirement is, let's get rid of no U, 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 let's get rid of USB. No USB at all. USB is just a license to, to bring malware into a system. So the places where it's easy to attack the manufacturing system is gonna be these Windows PCs or Linux PCs or any PCs that are on the factory floor. Let's get rid, in fact, let's get rid of them. So let's say, no, you gotta say, no PCs connected directly to an industrial switch. Take those out and put them up here. Connect them up here. So, so, so that they have to go through, the, the users have to be authenticated using standard Active Directory or whatever else you use to authenticate people. Over here, you're not, you're, they're not necessarily gonna be authentic. It's not as easy to authenticate them to that. Can be done, but it's not that easy. So but if we move them out of here, now if those things get corrupted, we've got, we can, if we're gonna monitor this perimeter security traffic, we can then see that there's something else, something new going on. It makes it easier to, to control and secure the what these PCs are doing if they're on the IT side of the world. So that's the first, th you know, these are, First couple of things we do, we went on any USB anywhere and we want no PCs. So the third thing is we want no access except through the, through the main connection, the main router. So the only access to the enterprise or IT is through this router. We can't have any one of these devices being connected to some other kind of switch someplace and connected to some other kind of router and, and going who knows where. You can't have any of that. So there's only everything that's in here has to go through this connection. So that's the, that's the third requirement of doing the security right. Four is we have to, um, we have to control outside vendors. Now, typically, you know, that's one of the problems you have on the factory floor is, yeah, you got the robot guys are coming in, the welding guys are coming in, there's somebody coming in to check this out or fix that, and, and they're all hooking up their, their laptops to those switches. You gotta get rid of that. Anybody that wants to connect 
they got to connect in to a switch up here in the IT world. And they got they got so that they can go through authentication there. They got to be authenticated. Nobody can can walk up here and connect to anything here. They got to come through the normal process so we can monitor the traffic going back and forth and making sure that the robot guy is not coming over here and looking at the PLC and, and, and seeing what values we have in the PLC. They could, should be talking to the robot and nothing else. We need to control that. You've got to take control. If you're, going to, if you're going to secure the manufacturing floor, we've got to control these outside vendors and not let them connect willy-nilly. So there's no connections here except one. We need to have one special connection that, that can only, that's within a locked cabinet that only the maintenance person, the, tr the person that knows how to troubleshoot, can, can get to. So that's going to be in a locked cabinet so that with a key on it that he's the, he or she can be, is the only one that can actually look at what's going on on this network. That's how we do perimeter security. So the big thing here is, is how do we, you know, what do we use to, make, to, to do this, to make sure that everything coming through here is the correct, is what we want, is what is the traffic we expect. So we need some kind of device that can do that. Because if this network is compromised, we're going to see traffic that is unusual. Because now, you know, if the qual, you know, if if we just somebody's on this network and they use a NAT, the problem with NATs, of course, if this control PLC is NATed, somebody finds that NAT address up here who's surfing around your IT network, says, "Oh, I found a NAT address. I wonder where that goes. Oh, it goes to this PLC." I'll, I'll, now, once they have that, they can do anything they want. They can change values. They can change code. They can read some of your intellectual property, whatever. So we've got to control that. So we've got to control the NATs. We've got to control if there's malware. That's going to be, we want to make sure we reject any of that other, and we reject any traffic that we don't expect. That covers pretty much the whole spectrum. So how do we do that? The, way, the thing we're looking for is something called DPI. DPI is deep packet inspection. That says, in real time, look at every mess, open every single frickin' message that's coming in through there, and those frickin' messages have to be messages that we expect, right? So DPI means that deep packet inspection engine is what we need. So we need a device here and here that can do that. And the, the only device I found that's really good at that is called the, is called the ICS Defender from Dynex. So the ICS Defender, this is an IT device for you IT guys. This thing has DHCP, it has DNS, it has IGMP, it has Traceroute, it has ping, it has Active Directory authentication. I mean, there's, it has remote access. It's a, it's all, it has all kinds of abilities to do this stuff plus that deep packet inspection engine. You can put one of these here, you could put one of these at other places in the infrastructure depending upon what you want to protect. You can protect as little or as much as you want. And this thing has load sharing, so if this link, all of a sudden you're, you're, you're sending a lot more traffic through here, you can load share two of the ports. Uh, this is an amazing device. I'll put a, uh, you know, the, one, the other thing is, the other thing you should know is that this, is, this device replaces your, uh, not only does it provide the DPI, it has NAT capabilities, it has remote access, so you can actually get rid of other two, two or three devices if you put this in. Really great functionality. I'll have a couple of things for you. I, there's an, uh, there's will be a link below where you can see the data sheet for this. There's also, you can get on my email list. I send out an email about every 10 days about something interesting about OT, manufacturing, cybersecurity, you might want to be interested in that list. I've got some, uh, some papers that you might be interested in, and uh, the data sheet for this will be available. So thank you very much for your time and attention, and uh, let's go out and let's, let's secure our manufacturing systems.